So Tim, great to see you. You just wrote an article with a provocative subtitle around the Wanamaker effect in healthcare and healthcare data. I just want to see what, what you really meant by that and what you're trying to get across. Well, you know, the Wanamaker uh, problem was uh, originally defined in advertising. This was a department store magnate from the 1890s, John Wanamaker, who famously said, half of my advertising doesn't work. The only problem is I don't know which half. And what we've seen on the consumer internet over the last decade and a half is a great deal of progress towards solving that problem. You know, we've figured out how to use data and predictive analytics to really figure out what advertising does work. And there's been a huge revolution as a result. And we're just starting to see that data revolution enter other fields. Uh, one of the most important ones is healthcare. You know, we have the potential to solve the Wanamaker problem, to figure out what treatments work for which patients, to figure out which patients are, are causing excessive costs to the system, to, uh, you know, there's so many different areas in which that analogy holds true. We've covered a little bit of that in the, the paper. Uh, it's, it's well worth, worth reading, I think. Uh, but you've just been out there on the ground talking to a number of companies in the healthcare business trying to validate whether the notions in that paper are actually reflecting how healthcare companies are thinking about the future, to what extent data plays in their, uh, in their thinking. Well, I was really astounded when we talked to a bunch of people from insurers, uh, providers like HCA, big pharma like Pfizer, uh, people at NIH and so forth, about this kind of sea change in attitude about data and health. And there's a couple of perspectives on it. One is that sharing data is going to matter. Traditionally in healthcare, data had been in silos. Now, so Never it, mind silos, it's been on paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that, but even like a study is like, you know, does this chemical affect this thing? And now it's like, well, there's a lot more that needs to be going on. And that means more collaboration. I almost fought in my chair when I heard some of them, Big Pharma, talk about non pharmacological therapy. Is that they're looking at integrative health. It's almost like the 60s has taken hold. In, in how to look at health data in that behavior modification matters. And this is turning into like a huge subject which you just didn't hear much about in the kind of mainstream before. So we think that there's kind of these forces going on that are going to make it like this, I was going to say integrated, I don't want to use integrated in this way, integrated health, but like collaboration around health mm -hmm. and bringing things together. Well, everything from crowdsourcing, you know, uh, with people who are sharing their symptoms, sharing their medical data. You know, we're really moving from that world in which everybody's thought, oh my God, this is like, to uh, you know, toxic waste, you know, medical <laughs> data, you know, you have to hide it, you've got to keep it secret, to people saying, wow, if I share it, I'm going to get insight that will help me with my condition. Uh, but how do we actually make that transition? You know, it seems to me that uh, there's a lot of institutional resistance in healthcare. There's not the kind of experience that we have. And we have a, only a quasi-market system in healthcare, uh, you know, which means that it's going to be harder to disrupt than, say, the media business. Right. So we think that there's a couple things going on that can, that can help with that. One is just taking advantage of this sea change in data. And one of the startling things I heard, and this was whether you're conservative or liberal, is that the U.S. is facing a kind of existential crisis around healthcare costs, and that this is bigger than one company. This is just a big thing to do. Yeah, who uh, was it who said uh, change happens when the pain of not changing is greater right. than the pain of changing? Yeah. <laughs> and we're kind I, of reaching that point. I think, and, but just that it seems to be so endemic yeah. that everyone is seeing that, I think, um, will help. I also think that and I'll pick on genetic data because on its own genetic data, you know, genes aren't destiny. It's how they interact with a lot of other things. And I think people are starting to see that, like, and same thing with EHR. EHR data doesn't solve anything. It's part of a puzzle. Now, I think that's a really important point. You know, what we have are multiple types of data coming on stream at the same time. We're going to move to electronic medical records, uh, move to cheap gene sequencing. I was just talking with John Madison, who's the chief uh, medical information officer at Kaiser, and he's pointing out that, that you, you know, within a few years, he expects that your full genome will be part of your medical record. Uh, but the real problem is that that individual 
genome data is really only useful in the context of a lot of other genetic information because it's when you can see it in context that it becomes meaningful. But, you know, there's this real sense that, you know, personal sensor data, new kinds of, of you know, the quantified self, uh, all this stuff is, is going to add up into, uh, you know, kind of the kind of environment that Silicon Valley entrepreneurs have been thriving in. And it just seems to me that the real opportunity here, and the opportunity that we're exploring with our Strata RX conference on big data and healthcare, is precisely that there are people with expertise who've been, as Jeff Hammerbacher, uh, formerly of Facebook, said, you know, the best minds of our generation uh, are trying to get people to click on ads. There's this huge opportunity for those people with those talents, with that experience, to come start working on stuff that really matters. You know, that can save lives, that can save money in one of the most uh, biggest and uh, most critical industries uh, of the future. Yeah, and the great thing is that we know it can work. Mm -hmm. You know, if anyone who reads in New York, and I've read Atul Gawande's articles about, you know, finding these uh, Uber patients who do a lot of cost, or knowing that when you correlate data across uh, multiple things, you get better results. Our friends in the QS movement, who are attaching that to what happens metabolically and so forth, and finding new ways to do things. The other thing I think that's going on is the whole data science community being able to get more involved more easily as the data sets go. Right now, if you wanted to do uh, a data project in health, it's really hard. There's a lot of barriers to getting to the data. And I think there's going to be a lot going on to make that easier, including yeah. things like donating data. Yeah. Like, I have a friend who's got ALS. I mean, I'd do anything to help this guy. Uh, I would gladly donate my data. And so it turns the privacy thing around a little bit where, yeah, there's some good coming out of this, like organ donation. You know, yeah. like, that if you can do this, you're probably going to take a different perspective on privacy than you would in the kind of like broader scheme, the way HIPAA was, uh, yeah. was put in now. So, so uh, let's just sort of, you know, be real blunt here. Uh, you know, the reason why we're interested in this at O'Reilly is because we think, A, it's a huge opportunity. It's precisely because it is hard that there is an opportunity for disruption. Uh, you know, it's funny because you have, uh, you know, conferences like TechCrunch Disrupt that are all about just, you know, more relatively trivial stuff on the consumer internet. And the real disruptive possibilities are in undisrupted markets like healthcare. Uh, and I just, you know, what I'm really interested in seeing is, uh, the people who've built these amazing skills, as Jeff says, trying to get people to click on ads, uh, to go take those skills and put them to work uh, figuring out how we actually save lives and unfold the future of healthcare. Yeah, I can't imagine if someone in the data space who wouldn't be interested in what's going on and just getting a sense of what the space holds. Right? It's like the stuff about the genetic data. I mean, it's been described to me as like the dirtiest data set ever created. <laughs> you know, because it's how, people, how we're making sense of it is a mess. And it's the kind of thing, I think, as more gets applied to it, we, you know, we just don't know what we're going to find out. And I think that the Strata Rx provides an opportunity to get some exposure to this. There yeah. is, there's no question this is going to be a huge field. And this is your chance to get an early look.